This is my first video on myoglobin and hemoglobin. This is an animated GIF by Eric Martz, and it shows the heme with the oxygen in uh, iron and yellow and the oxygen in red and shows the uh, structure of the heme molecule that holds it and how that heme fits into the 3D structure of the myoglobin. And the same holds case for the uh, subunits of hemoglobin. Our learning objectives are to recognize the structure of heme, tell how myoglobin differs in structure and function from hemoglobin, describe the binding of O2 to myoglobin as compared to hemoglobin, tell how O2 binding changes hemoglobin structure. O2 is important for aerobic metabolism. Bacteria rely on diffusion. They're small and they can do that. Higher organisms have to have O2 transport systems. Usually they're coordinated with Fe plus 2, ferrous iron, that adds O2 binding to proteins. Myoglobin stores oxygen in the muscles. Whales have to have a lot of that so they, they can dive deep. Hemoglobin. Hemoglobin transports o O2 from the lungs to the tissues. Hemoglobin is found in the red blood cells. These are the red blood cells. You see they're indented in the center and they have no nucleus so they're, uh, they can deform easily and squeeze through small capillaries. Hematocrit is the percentage of blood volume made up of red blood cells. Just let blood settle and if it's 45% uh, uh, it's, you know, the, uh, is the re normal level for men and women around 40%. Reticulocytes, they have RNA but no nucleus and they are the precursors of red blood cells. Erythrocytes have no nucleus and no RNA. So here is the uh, hemoglobin molecule and you can see there's Fe in the middle there and here's the heme and here are the subunits. The beta chains are in blue, the alpha chains are in red. And when these bind oxygen, you can see we get movement there. There are actually about 5.2 million red blood cells per mil of blood. That's 250 million hemoglobin molecules per cell, or 2.5 million cells are born and die per second. So as we're talking about this, millions and millions of red blood cells in your body are dying and being remade. The alpha chain is 141 amino acids. The beta chain is a little longer at 146 amino acids. And O2 binds to the iron and the heme. Heme makes, the, makes blood red. Uh, again, a, a little discussion on the hematocrit here. So here is uh, portoporphyrin 9. This is the precursor for heme. We'll talk about the biosynthesis of this later. And here's a hydrophilic side. You notice the carboxyl groups up here with a negative charge. And then there's a hydrophobic side down here in the bottom. You notice there's no charges or hydroxyl groups down here in this area. So here is heme. And here is the iron binding in the middle, Fe plus 2. So you add, he add iron to the portoporphyrin 9 and you get heme. Myoglobin uh, is a monomer. It only has uh, one polypeptide chain. And it was uh, first, the structure of that was determined by John Kendrew, and he won the 1962 Nobel Prize. He was working at Cambridge. Uh, his uh, information showed that it was 75% alpha helix, the hydrophobics inside, hydrophilic side side, no disulfide bonds, proline terminated four of the eight helical strands, and he, heme was the prosthetic group. Uh, if you have myoglobin without heme, it's called apomyoglobin, or if you have hemoglobin, Hemoglobin without uh, out heme, it's called apohemoglobin. So here's, here's heme and O2 binding. You can see there are two histidines. One is called the proximal histidine, and its high nitrogen coordinates with the iron in the, in the heme uh, there. And then we have this distal histidine. We'll talk more about it. It's on the other side, and then the oxygen binds right in here. And so when the oxygen binds, it pulls this very planar, and this tugs on this heme here, on this histidine, to, to pull this in. And into the plane. So myoglobin stores oxygen as the heme goes out, uh, as the red blood cells go out into the periphery, they release their oxygen. The oxygen binds to deoxymyoglobin. That, that oxymyoglobin is stored and that can be used in the mitochondria to produce energy. 
CO2 is a byproduct and that goes about in the veins and goes back to the lungs and gets uh, exhaled. So O2 must diffuse out of the red blood cell into the blood plasma through the capillary wall and into the cells such as muscle cells that need, need a lot of oxygen because of the high metabolism rate. Myoglobin and hemoglobin O2 binding curves. You can see that myoglobin has a hyperbolic binding curve, whereas hemoglobin has a sigmoidal or allosteric binding curve. Myoglobin is non-allosteric, one subunit. Hemoglobin is allosteric with four subunits. So here is heme binding. You can see the oxygen binding there, and it's going from deoxy to oxy, deoxy to oxy, and this came from the Protein Data Bank website. Here are the alpha subunits in blue in this model. The beta subunits are red, and then the hemes are in here, and then BPG binds in the middle. And here's a picture of the alpha beta dimer and how they're held together. When they bind oxygen, they get you get movement between the two units. And so we call the deoxyform T or TALT. That's the structure of deoxyhemoglobin. And then is when R uh, when it binds oxygen, you get the relaxed form and, uh, of oxyhemoglobin, and that results in the breaking of several uh, different bonds that are holding these together. So there's less bonding between the subunits in the relaxed form than in the tight or taut form. So here's again, here's the uh, proximal histidine coordinating. Then when the oxygen binds, you see that iron moves up slightly, pulling that proximal histidine with it and causing the hemoglobin to move. So here is a uh, nice little video showing you it, the movement that you get in the hemoglobin as uh, oxygen binds. And normally that oxygen would be diffusing out and back and forth, but you don't see it. And you see that histidine back there that gets moved, pulled on. All right, nice little video. And then again, here's the, uh, some, of the, some of the bonds that stabilize the, the deoxy form are hydrogen, uh, hydrogen bonds between aspartic acid 94 and asparagine 102, for example. There's an H bond there that, that's been studied quite well. There are others and hydrophobic interactions that occur as well, but you can see the movement that occurs here. All right. Thank you.